Welcome to the Thoughts and Rants of a Behavior Scientist Show, hosted by Wall Street Journal and USA Today best-selling author, Dr. Polly. Hey folks, Dr. Polly here, and thanks for joining me on my Heart and Science YouTube channel where I take a look at common issues or phenomena in our personal and professional lives and provide you with practical solutions rooted in the science of human behavior. Be sure to click on the subscribe button to be notified of future content. Today I want to talk to you about improving relationships by avoiding what Professor Emeritus, behavior scientist, and best-selling author Dr. Glenn Latham called coercion traps. While his work was mostly dedicated to children and families, the concepts and strategies he provided are soundly grounded in the science of human behavior and therefore easily generalizable to relationships. One thing I've learned over a lifetime of studying human behavior is this. You can't coerce or force your significant other to meet some expectation you have of them. Coercion only works momentarily, but can have a lasting and negative impact on the relationship. While you might win the proverbial round in a heated argument, consistent coercion or using fear of consequences to make your point and force behavior change will ultimately put you in the loser's bracket. In the long run, it encourages three responses from your significant other, escape, avoidance, or a desire to get even. And these can take relationships into undesirable territories that ultimately result in their demise. It is far better to create a relationship where your significant other behaves a certain way because you both enjoy the positive consequences of it, rather than behaving in ways to avoid the negative consequences like fear of retribution from you. So how do you make it through the difficult times? Well, it's common knowledge that you have to create a loving, nurturing environment if you want to have a happy and sustainable relationship. I'll dive into what that looks like in another video. But what is uncommon knowledge are the three coercion traps Dr. Latham identified that you are likely not even aware of. If you get stuck in these traps, you are probably compromising the very environment required to create the happy and sustainable relationship you desire. Let's take a brief look at these three traps and a couple of quick tips as alternatives. Oh, and by the way, none of the suggestions I'm making will work if you've not gotten together with your partner to establish shared values, goals, mutual expectations. Okay, here we go. The first trap is arguing. Trying to convince your significant other that they are wrong and you are right typically draws a line in the dirt and ends up creating a situation where your significant other will focus on defending their position as opposed to listening to yours. Rather than digging in and defending your position all the time, make sure you are actively listening to your partner. Not just nodding, but trying to understand where they are really coming from. Be aware of your body language and tone of voice. Being aggressive or defensive during an argument will only heighten it. If you have a point to make, if you can, make a quick note on a piece of paper so you don't forget about it. This will allow you to give your partner your full attention. Agree to this ahead of time so they know why you're doing it and it doesn't inadvertently trigger a negative response when emotions are heightened. If they make good points, acknowledge those points and then you can share your own. This can have a dramatic and positive impact on their willingness to hear what you have to say as well. You should always be looking for win-win situations. The next trap is criticism. Avoid seeking a fault in your significant other. Your partner isn't going to say, oh babe, you are the wisest. Thank you for pointing out the error of my ways. I'll change immediately. Oh, if only it were that easy. Criticism creates a situation where your significant other will begin deliberately hiding things from you. In fact, they might even start avoiding you. Think about it. Imagine if all your boss did was criticize you at work, even if some of it was deserved. What if you began making improvements, but they just focused on what was going wrong as opposed to what was going right? You would quickly begin to dislike and avoid them. Like molding a piece of clay into a beautiful statue, you are better off shaping approximations of agreed upon behavior beginning with very specific praise. Like, hey, thanks for taking the time out to take the garbage out. If doing chores was an agreed upon expectation and they'd recently made improvements in that area. Then slowly shifting to recognizing basic and core beliefs that motivate action or what we might call shared values. For example, instead of praising a specific behavior, you might recognize the desired behavior by saying, 
You are so dependable. Thank you. I love you. Oh, and by the way, here's a bonus. Avoid what I call the big butt trap. That is providing some sort of praise or positive statement and then attaching a negative one to it. Like, you did a great job, but I've done it. You do it. The people around us do it. It's all over the place. But the problem is that the big butt effectively erases the positive statement you just made. In fact, over time, your positive statements will actually become aversive as your significant other comes to believe that you are just setting them up for the corrective one. It's a lose-lose situation, so be aware. The final trap I want you to be aware of is questioning. In particular, why questions? Or challenging questions like, what do I need to do to get through to you? Asking your significant other why they did or didn't do something can be seen as challenging and typically leads to a response like, I don't know, which is oftentimes the precursor to an argument. Asking why questions can encourage lying and defensiveness and lead to more questions instead of solutions. If you're going to ask questions, they are better focused on working together to determine solutions or even asking questions related to what you might do more, less, or differently to add to the relationship. This can result in a mirroring effect where they respond the same way to you by asking what they can do more, less, or differently. Besides, questioning your own behavior should be a norm. When you use any of the traps I've just listed to compel your significant other into behaving a certain way, you are engaging in coercion. And as I noted earlier, there are a number of negative outcomes associated with that. Think about it like a relationship bank. Every time you have a positive interaction, it's like putting money in that bank. Every time you use coercion, it's like taking money out. Sometimes one really big coercive interaction, like a major argument, can be like making a huge withdrawal. And just like being penalized when you withdraw more money than you've taken out from the bank, you will certainly incur costs. But this will be at the expense of your relationship. The first step in fixing a problem in your relationship is being aware. Being aware of shared values, being aware of the negative thoughts and feelings that show up within you, and then being aware of how you behave when these thoughts and feelings show up. You behave in these ways like those outlined in the course of traps to get rid of the crummy stuff that you are thinking and feeling as you try to force change. But remember, you might win the round, but you ultimately lose the championship relationship title as you behave in ways that push your significant other further away from a happy and sustainable relationship. Once you're aware of the link between what's inside of you and how it impacts what you do, then you might learn to accept these private events and commit to behaviors that will move you towards the values shared with your significant other, despite how you feel or what you're thinking in the moment. In the end, it's not your thoughts and feelings that make or break a relationship, it's your behaviors. And if your significant other lacks awareness, if you care for them, be patient. Try to work through it together using some of the simple acceptance and commitment strategies I just laid out. In fact, you might consider sharing this video with them. Listen, I use this strategy all the time in both my personal and professional life. It works if you commit to it. If you like what you've heard, be sure to click on the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. Be well.